my youtube channel this is your girl coach Corey, and this is the place where we inspire motivate and impact today i have a very special guest for you a lady who is a powerhouse an atmosphere changer a lady who is an overcomer and i'm so happy because today our episode is called conversations with terry she's a good friend of mine she's a warrior come on talk of people who eh, people who overcome real things <laughs> so allow me to welcome my friend terry terry welcome thank you thank to, you thank you yeah welcome to our show mm -hmm. and really i just want us to talk right. i want us to talk because you and I have talked a lot mm -hmm. and we met many, many, many years ago, yes. but I know they are not interested in hearing my story. <laughs> <laughs> They're interested to know how we met. <laughs> yeah. I, I'll let you talk. Today right. is your day. Uh -huh. Just tell us a little bit. Who is Terry? Okay. Where do you come from? Right. How did you grow up? How many brothers, uh -huh. sisters, the whole shabang? I'll try very hard. Right. To be silent <laughs> <laughs> and just be a good listener. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you, Corey, for having me. Thank you so much, our viewers. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, as you heard, my name is Terry. Um, a little bit of my background: how I grew up, born and bred in Nairobi, mm -hmm. Kenya. For those who, or some people call it Kenya, it's fine. So. <laughs> Kenya it is. Um, family of seven children. I am the sixth born and the last girl. So we are six girls, mm. one boy. Oh, yes, wow. yes. Uh -huh. um, grown up in a pretty good family. Um, I mean, by all standards. Um, I'm, I'm one of those people who grew up in a family that was very, very functional. I really thank God for that. Mm -hmm. And then... I truly believe we are the wealthiest people in town. Really? And absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Until I visited one of our neighbors, um, just a few houses down the block, and they had a color TV, and my dreams were shattered right there. <laughs> you are not the creature. I was like, hold up. We, I thought we were the, you know, the main guys, but that was a good reality check. Um, but that tells you the kind of family we grew up in because we were so empowered. We were mm. very much apart from the time we were little girls. Mm. Uh, Daddy, one of the things that my dad kept pumping in us is remember you're a poodle. And I mean, remember, you know, life will not always be the same, but carry it with pride and, and things like that. So that's the kind of background we grew up with. A very close-knit family. I remember we used to go everywhere together. Um, talking about when you go to the shop to buy something, mm -hmm. we would go seven of us. And people used to call us the seven proud sisters. Oh, wow. Not because we're proud, uh uh, because we were, we just didn't find the need to talk to other people as much because we were seven. Like, hello, where do you look for outsiders to talk to, to be seat fillers? So, so, you know, something well, like that. There's no space for anyone else. No, so, but. Now they used to think we're seven proud sisters. Remember, we're six girls and one boy. But then, yeah, my bro, people just used to think, I mean, he's part of the six girls. So, yeah, that's basically growing up. Wow, sounds like you guys had a pretty good uh, relationship just amongst yourselves. Oh, we did. We did. And your dad just raised you in how you, you know, you felt proud to belong to their Pudo family. Yes, yes my dad... God rest his soul. I mean, he was that man. That man, his consistency was beyond, I don't know. He taught me about faith. He taught me about consistency. He taught me about what it is to keep your word and coming home on time. Uh, you know, 5.30, my father was at home and he would leave work at 5. So if 5.30, my father is not in the house, then clearly something is wrong. Mm. So he gave us... We grew up with a lot of stability. I remember when people would be chased away from school, mm -hmm. and but we were there, and school fees is paid for the whole year. And wow. you know, when you're a little kid, um, um, utotology, you'll catch up with that word very many times <laughs> as I speak. <laughs> when you're a little kid, and, and you're just thinking, why did he pay the school fees? Because everybody else is being chased, like you're about three people in the class. You're thinking, man, I need to go home. Right. Utotology. 
I'm coming up with that. Okay. Yes. <laughs> You're going to have to translate to I need to. <laughs> and it needs to get into some dictionary somewhere. It has to. <laughs> it has to. Yeah. Okay, so you grew up in an amazing home. Mm-hmm. So what was your spiritual life like? Did you guys go to church? Mm-hmm. Did you pray together? Right. I mean, just walk us through that uh, journey. Mm-hmm. What 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 your typical let me say Sunday because as Africans yeah. we go to church on Sunday. Yeah. Uh, was that part and parcel of your family right. uh, lifestyle? Do you know, it's interesting you say that. I won't even talk about Sundays only. Okay. Because we are that family that go to church in the course of the week. Oh, yeah, the ones of Monday prayers. Yeah, those ones. <laughs> and this is Catholic. Oh. Yeah, but, but we were so immersed in it. Uh, you know, personally, I was part of the Toto Misa. I mean, if, if anybody would know that, you know, the the altar girl, so, so, so to speak, yeah. um, taking care of the church, making sure uh, father has his clothes ironed and stuff like that. It's clean and everything. And that went on. That that was my dad. That was my mom, mm-hmm. my siblings. So we grew up in church as Catholics. Then we were charismatic Catholics. We were those ones you would call rebels, so, so to speak, those days. Um yeah, okay. and, and Sunday, that was compulsory. The, okay. we, it wasn't about something you think about. Are we going to church or not? No, it, was, it wasn't even something you're being forced. Mm. We just knew this is the mm. only way we were brought up in. And so we just went to church you every float. Sunday. Exactly. Faithfully did everything we needed to do. Did a lot of uh, choir. I mean, name it. We okay. were in church. You were, we were in church. So tell us. Mm-hmm. How was uh, high school? Did you go to boarding? Right. You were a scholar. Yes. How did that change you? Just you know, just look us through your experiences. Yeah. So I had a mixture of both, but I was more of a boarder. Oh, okay. It was a very interesting. I would go home many times because I was a sickly. Oh, so okay. yeah. So you so used to get sick in school. Yes, yes. I used to. Get Are you sure you used to get sick? I might was. Uh, <laughs> I just needed to break out. That was my breaking out. <laughs> Why did you go to high school? That was buru buru. Oh, you had to buru buru. Yes, yes. Seriously, that was my breaking out. I was like, I'm done. And you lived in buru buru. Yes. And you had to buru buru. Exactly. <laughs> okay. You know, so I just, I no, there was buru buru high school and there was buru buru secondary school. Oh, so okay. mine was secondary school. In fact, they used to call it Mambao that time because okay. we still had wooden structures oh. or Mambao domes or something like that. Yeah, okay. something like that wow. Time. Yeah. So high school was amazing mm-hmm. um, because I kept going back home. So really, that was a highlight for me. But <laughs> and you are la- you are the last one. Yes. <laughs> you know, I needed to go home. <laughs> last one thing. <laughs> Yes, mm-hmm. but apart from that, um, I, I was in everything. I was in basketball. I was in drama. Mm-hmm. I was singing. Mm-hmm. Basically, I do everything. So I remember one time when I brought my grades home, and my dad, I had uh, average, mm-hmm. and my dad told me, um, "You know, we took you to school to to actually read, <laughs> not to do all these other things. <laughs> yeah, too many extracurricular." <laughs> exactly. <laughs> But you know what? I was really excelling eh? in all these extracurricular things. I mean, I would come home with um, jags. Did I say that loudly? Okay, jags, maybe. You know, <laughs> <laughs> when they're not giving me a medal. Why did they give me a medal? We'll take that up. <laughs> they give me jags. <laughs> oh yeah, they were jags. And that time, I'm number one, by the way. <laughs> sure. With a certificate. Okay, I have so many certificates at home. So it was, it was nice, but mm. ministry-wise, in high school, there's something that happened. Oh, I used okay. to pray for people. In school? Yes. How now? I used to pray. and, and Were you like Christian Union mm. or something? Yes. I was Christian Union. I was a leader. like I was okay. a head girl but before I got to fourth form. So hold on. Yes. So in high school, you were very athletic. Mm-hmm. And you are a leader. You are a, a head girl at mm-hmm. some point. Yes. And... In form three, actually, and you used to pray for people, right? But school wasn't your thing. No. Academia is no, not no, your no. Thing. I was. I, I actually don't think I went to school to read. I think I went to do every other thing apart from what really I was supposed to do there. That's and not that I was. I was not on the lower. You are just. You said you are. Average. I was just average. Okay. You know, which was 
not supposed to be the case mm-hmm. if I'd actually put in the work. But I was just, I get fascinated with people and why they do what they do. Mm-hmm. So I, I just get into their business and, you know, we we're all over the place. And it was good. And I kept praying for people. People were getting healed. I remember one time my parents were summoned. Like oh, uh, in school, yeah. Like you oh. can't. She can't pray for people, and we have all this asthma. What what are, what are those the inhalers? inhalers? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I would collect the inhalers. Guys are healed. And like she <laughs> can't do that. She's not a doctor. <laughs> She's not a doctor. Oh no! Oh, so, so you had your own street running. Were you picking? A, were you taking an offering? Unfortunately, no. <laughs> oh, how, how I miss that. How I missed that! I hey, heard you should have heard. Hey, you should have heard. I know. <laughs> hey, I missed that memo. That's the place. How I missed that memo for real. <laughs> I was doing ministry. <laughs> oh Lord. <laughs> yeah. So that that was high school for me. Then uh, when I went to college. I went to um, East Africa University. Okay. And I was doing my my Bible and theology there. But how okay. that came about, uh-huh. it was one of those... I was working. I was working as um, computer in, in computer analytics. Mm-hmm. But then at one point, I just thought to myself, I'm always in church. I'm this mm-hmm. church person, churchy, everything. Not to say that I'm a saint. So at this point, because mm-hmm. you had mentioned you grew up Catholic. Right. So are you still doing this in the Catholic church? No. Okay, so there was a transition. Yeah, there was a transition okay. from Catholic now to Protestant, mm-hmm. which was not met with cheers. My parents were really super upset. My mother was upset. My daddy was upset. I mean, they were blaming my sister. Our second born she is the one who took me there. Okay. I, and I loved it. I remember walking into our Protestant gathering and I was like, hold up. Are those lights like that? <laughs> Wait, the, the, are people looking that nice? Not to say people in Catholic don't look nice. Don't, don't get me wrong. <laughs> you know, you just experienced something different. Totally different. And I thought to myself, what is this? The singing was completely different. The, the atmosphere was just, I was just so sucked in. Mm-hmm. And it was um, Reverend... Teresia Wairimo. A true, okay. I respect that woman of God. That was yeah. the first meeting I For went. Sure. That, then I can see you know, what yes. I was And yeah. I thought, wait, a uh, worship team can look like that, you know, because there's a way we were dressing in Catholic, you know. And someone can preach looking that pretty and mm. the word was coming forth that did something to my everything. Like, like everything was turned inside out. So did you then walk down the road of um, salvation? Because right. coming from, I, I am not familiar with Catholic, Catholic charismatic, uh, charismatic mm-hmm. uh, but was salvation a thing? Salvation was a thing, yes, okay. in, in Catholic charismatic. Mm-hmm. Salvation was a thing, and the one which brought the, the most issue when you're Catholic charismatic is speaking in tongues. Oh. Yeah, so we were those ones where we. Oh, you were speaking in tongues. Yeah. Oh, gosh. we speak in tongues from here to there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, yeah. So yeah. now you've um, you finished high school. Mm-hmm. So now you've gone to Bible college. Yes, I've gone to Bible college, uh-huh. and I went to Bible college saying I'm not becoming a pastor. I am only here to become a better um, person who understands better scriptures. Ah, uh, I'm not becoming a pastor. <laughs> Never ever. No, 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 no. I, I'm not doing that broke thing. <laughs> and, and you need to that broke thing. No, you know, I'm not doing that broke thing. And I'm not doing that drama thing. Because mm. the time, every time the media is highlighting something mm. to do with pastors, mm. it's either they're tripping mm. or they always broke. Like there's just something, yeah. so they needed to con someone to make it work. Yeah. So I said, no, I'm, I'm not. I'm not going there for that. Mm. I'm actually just going to understand scriptures better, mm. and then so it was yeah. for personal, personal, exactly, growth. exactly. Okay. Yeah. Had nothing to do really with vocational training. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. So what happened after that? So as I'm still in Bible school, mm-hmm. I I go to this wonderful, wonderful church. Then it was called Nairobi Mission Church. So I go to this church and, you know, I meet with the people and, I, and God has it that wherever I go, it doesn't take long mm-hmm. before I'm leading mm-hmm. in one way or another. Mm-hmm. So I begin to lead. I mean, I'm in the worship team. I'm with the youth and everything. And so the transition was very smooth. I didn't even realize it, but I remember um, the pastor there came to the school mm-hmm. to, you know, to ask about what kind of a person am I? 
you know what kind okay. of a person am I your as pa- he's your considering pastor. exactly okay. as he's considering to have me as an intern pastor Oh. So he comes to the school to ask, so, you know, Terry, what kind of person is she? And I remember uh, the one of the, the, the teachers, the faculty, just told my pastor at that time, uh, she's very strong-headed. Like, she will make a decision and stand on it. If she doesn't understand, she will keep asking questions. Why? So she, you, won't, she's, you won't just move her anyhow. Mm. And that can be a strength and a weakness. True. And so... Yeah, and so, I mean, he walked out with that, of course, plus many other things that he was told, worship, blah, 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 nice things. Mm. Oh, nice, <laughs> nice things, all right? Nice things. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, so I remember when he called me to the office and he was telling me, hey, so this is what I was told, you know, and I said, I mean, I just need to understand um, where you're coming from. If I don't agree with your school of thought, mm. I don't think, like, what people do, if I don't agree with your school of thought, then I cast you away. I don't understand that theology how about we sit down talk and that is really truly don't agree right. it's okay to disagree I, I mean agree to disagree absolutely yeah. so i mean we he understood and yeah by the time he was asking me to get into pastoral as an intern mm. i was already leading so oh. it was it wasn't something that i had to wait i have to think mm. it was now just being made official mm. so so that's what happened mm. yeah Okay, mm-hmm. so then you're a young lady mm-hmm. and now you're in ministry. Yes. Uh, and you're an intern pastor. Yeah. And now you're thinking, uh, you want to get married anytime soon? Mm. Or not yet? Marriage was not so much at the forefront because I didn't, how do I say this and remain saved? I didn't feel <laughs> the need. <laughs> I was so satisfied. Oh my God. <laughs> How do I say this and remain safe? I'm so satisfied. <laughs> Let me tell you. Oh Lord. I was so satisfied with my relationship with God, mm. with my dad, mm. like the men around me. Mm. It was so nice. Like relationship so was you just did feel working. pressure. Yes. Like and you then, feel society pressure. Uh, no, no. In so fact, were you dating? No, I wasn't. In oh. fact, what made it terrible for me was the day I realized that I can't marry my dad. Because I grew up knowing I'll marry my dad. Because <laughs> you are so close to your dad. Yeah, and he's this cool guy. Like, yeah. I mean, the home was just really working. So wow. then it hit me. Wait, you can't, I can't marry him. I was like, oh, I can't marry him? Like, it's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so you were living in a little fantasy world. Oh, yes, I was. <laughs> I was. So <laughs> your dad was your, the perfect man. Perfect. So any guy then would really have had to live up to a very exactly. high standard. Exactly. Because... You grew up with him. You mm-hmm. are close. You, mm-hmm. I know you have mentioned to me personally that you'd have meetings. Yes. You know, family meetings mm-hmm. and you address issues. Yeah. You pour out your heart. Yeah. And he's not the kind of person who tells you stop talking or, you know, muzzles you. My dad would cheer you on. Like, you speak your heart. And just taught us life lessons that carry us until today. Mm-hmm. You know, mommy was not as present as my dad because my mom was super busy mm. with all the chamas mm. and then just making it really work mm. for the family at that age you don't see it yeah now today yeah. we sit back and we're like oh what mama did a lot she mm. contributed a lot towards this family yeah because as a child you see the parent who's always there most of the time physically present exactly but there's someone behind the scenes right. making sure mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. you are able to lay down yep. to, to yeah food and advance to, by yeah. this you know the house the what the yeah. what but at that time you don't see it no. you don't really care as yeah. a child that's not information that you're privy to no. or you you're not even concerned about no you're not yes you're not yes. okay so then at what point did you start dating so when I was still in Bible school, just before I finished, mm-hmm. that's when I, I met up with Harry. Okay. So when I start, let me back it up. So we meet with Harry mm-hmm. and I tell him, oh, hold up. No, we meet with Harry and I tell him, I, um, I was working and I told him, I feel the call of God in my life mm-hmm. to just study scripture. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to quit and go back to to school and so you're gonna quit to the internship no yeah. now that's why i said i have to really back it oh, up okay yeah so it's not even the internship mm. it's 
working i have to quit oh, working remember okay. i was working with yes. computers so i have to quit mm. that and just go back to bible school mm. and so and he tells me you know i'm interested what i said no i'm not in that space but if you wait also he's trying to throw points exactly and you are too holy yes <laughs> and I'm you, just, and you and jesus just like you know <laughs> There's me, JC, then there's my dad. <laughs> Harris, there's no room for you. you. No, exactly. <laughs> and so I tell him, but interesting enough, I had a I had a very I had a very good heart and I still have it today, viewers. <laughs> very good. So yeah, yes, you do. You do. You really <laughs> so do. I told him if you wait um until I finish Bible school, that's three years, mm -hmm. we'll see. You know, I could get married to you and he says I wait. Oh. I'm like so okay. he waited he waited he waited wow yes he waited i tell single people marriage is not an emergency no it's not some things that you have to put in place yeah for destiny to be realized yeah. you you yeah. gotta do that yeah. you gotta do that the yeah. right one will stay put and wait yeah. but you also have to be the right one yeah to make sure you do the right thing oh yeah absolutely right? yeah so so yeah so that's how i met her and then when I finished now Bible school and he's saying, you know, I want to get married to you, I want to get married to you. I said, okay, fine. So now you're ready to get married. Mm -hmm. So what happens? So we start organizing for my wedding. Okay. And the excitement was just beyond. I mean, I'm excited. Think about growing up and all you're thinking about is the day you get married. See, the thing is with us girls, we get married when we are very little. Oh, yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. You get married by around six, seven. Exactly. You know, you, we, you, you we do the whole thing. We, we, we practice, practice with the dolls. I mean, I mean everything. You and don't happily ever. Everything. Mm. So, I mean, it was really exciting now that this day is going to come to pass. And, of course, the day did come excited. Before we get there, that's when I met you. Right. Because at that time, uh, I had a shop mm -hmm. in Westlands. Yes. And you came, you actually promoted us quite a bit. I did. Yeah, yeah. you bought a few uh -huh. things. And the Friday before the wedding, mm -hmm. um, I remember seeing you. Mm -hmm. And then uh, on Monday, I had a different story. So right. walk us through. Because Friday, when uh, we saw you, everything was fine. Mm -hmm. What happened? Okay. Um, I must say we need Corey's shop branch in Kenya, right? I mean, we are, I think obvious are in agreement. We need that shop that you had. <laughs> it was the most amazing. I just can't go on without saying that. It was the most unique, <laughs> precious shop in Westlands. You go hunting for it, anything, wedding, I mean, classic <laughs> Okay, mm -hmm. let me go back. Times and seasons. <laughs> okay, I got you. Got you. Okay. So yeah, so that that's around the time we met, and um, just picking stuff for our wedding, and that was just around that season when we were all over the place. You all know how our bride and groom are just running here and there, and of course they are best made and and people like that. So as we were doing all that on Friday. I mean, I, I go do my hair, I'm late like many brides, mm -hmm. you know, doing my hair. So we come home with one of my friends called Judy. So we are at home and I'm excited, just a beautiful evening as I wait for the next day. So the next day, uh, the, the same evening, I realized that I had part of the clothes of my fiancé, cravat, you know, mm -hmm. things like that. Mm -hmm. And so I call him, I call Harry and I tell him, you know, I have these things, I'm sorry, I mean, how, how are you going to get these things? Mm. So he tells me, don't you worry. When you get to the church, um, what I will do is I'll just come out. You give me this thing, you know, dash to the washroom, change, and then yeah. get to the church. Mm. So that was a plan. But then in the morning, when I mentioned this, Judy was around, a, a dear, dear friend. Judy was around and she said, hey, I am going to church fast. How about I go with these things mm. and take take them to hurry mm. so that time who's awake judy myself and my best mate valerie mm. so um judy and valerie they begin talking because judy was not very conversant with where we were staying so she needed valerie to take her to the bus stop because she was not driving mm. so as uh, valerie says i can't do that because i am preparing breakfast remember my work is to ensure that i prepare the most amazing breakfast for the bride mm -hmm. so of course they have this little back and forth and i think to myself nah, it's just very close like the bus stop is pretty close 
so I'm just gonna rush out and um, escort Judy then I dash back home this is quarter to six in the morning my parents are still asleep relatives are still asleep like three people are the ones who are awake and you had a lot of people who had slept over exactly. because you know that whole yeah. preparation yes so the house is full of people house is full and the bride walks out yes okay i sneak out that's the right that's word. a fast yes yes <laughs> yes so i sneak out mm -hmm. and i scored judy judy boards a matatu uh you call it public transportation for those who don't understand and then i mean i went back walk as I passed, there was a there was sort of an alley. How, how far is it, like from from the bus stop now to your home? How far? About five minutes walk. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, that's pretty about close. five minutes. It's okay. pretty close to okay. our house. So I passed this. There was a tiny path. So I passed this path, and all I'm thinking about is my wedding day. Like I'm humming happy tunes. Like today is that day that I've been dreaming, praying for. Day. It's my wedding day. Like mm. you know. <laughs> And then there's a car parked before me and there's a guy sitting on the hood of the car. Oh, he was the outside. Trunk. What's the front? Because we call it bonnet. <laughs> the hood. The hood. The hood, right. Okay. In America, it's the hood. Yeah, yeah you know, bonnet, it's like, yeah. it's bonnet. Yeah. Hood trunk. Yeah. Hood, right? Yeah, trunk is... Uh, oh, okay, so the hood. <laughs> <laughs> so, sitting at the hood of the car, outside. Okay. Right? And I didn't think about anything. Like zilch mm. nothing i was just happy it's my day and i you know i went on with my walk as i passed the car in a fraction of a second i kid you not fraction of a second someone at that time i didn't know if it's that guy someone just grabbed me from behind there was this chokehold i felt the choke on oh, getter yes like i think you know yes because it you can't do anything because okay. I was able to produce little sound. I can't even call it screaming. Okay. And then something was quickly stashed in my mouth because I'm trying to... Okay. And something was just stashed in my okay. mouth. And before I knew it, I was at the back seat. Oh, so, the, so this is now not one person. This is this happened very quickly. Yeah, very quickly. I cannot even tell you for a fact it was one person or two people. Because here you are from in a happy mood. Exactly. All of a sudden... Yeah. You you can't breathe. I can't breathe. And something and something is in my mouth, and, and you've been thrown into a car. Exactly. Wow. So when I land in the car, and so front or back? Back. Okay. And think about my height. Yeah, you, I'm you're not tall. A pretty I tall person. This, yeah, we call ourselves long. <laughs> right? right. You are long. You know. <laughs> so I'm trying to fit in the back seat, and before you know it, there's a driver. There's someone, the co driver, and the co driver is kneeling on his seat. Everybody is just trying to pin me down. Because it's not about you being thrown and you relax. You're fighting. I'm fighting. And I don't know what, what I'm fighting. But okay. I'm just... Something is off. Like So now adrenaline has on. kicked in. Exactly. Because okay. when adrenaline kicks in, you either act... It's either fight or freeze, flight. flight yeah. You know? So I am fighting. I am all over the place. I'm throwing my hands. I'm throwing my legs. And there's just something off. I don't know what it is. And... The minute they put me down, they tell me, you have to go away until you die. In Kiswahili. Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, wait. At first I thought, is it a surprise from Harry? But then the surprise quickly came to a halt when the first blow landed. What? That's when it hit me. No. So he, they started punching. Yep. And that's when I knew. So you are you gagged? Mm -hmm. Yes. And now you're being beaten. Now I'm being beaten everywhere. I'm talking about everywhere. Oh. I'm being beaten, face, stomach, legs. Because remember, I'm fighting. By all of them or whoever? No, the driver and the co-driver. Sorry, the guy behind and the co-driver. And the okay. car is moving. Oh, the car is moving. Oh, the car is moving. So you're no longer where you no. are. So you're basically being kidnapped. Yes. So you're, they're driving. Mm -hmm. So... There's, so there's two other people right. and the driver. So mm -hmm. there are three. Yes. And so they're driving. You're kicking and screaming, mm -hmm. and it's, it's still early in the morning. You, the Pretty light early. has it's, no, exactly. The, it's not the light quiet. has not come. Absolutely. So yeah. Wow. Yeah. It was. I can't even begin to um, explain. You know that time. What it does to you, the confusion it throws you in, because you're coming from a super high. 
to a complete law. I'm talking about peak law, not on the ground law. This is peak law where there's the amount of confusion in your head. You, there's nothing you can comprehend because I'm here thinking what's going on when I'm here. And then um, one thing I've seen very common and I'm running ahead of myself with such cases is people, they just keep talking to you, your abductors or your rapists. So they just kept screaming one command after another, you know, so okay. you lose it, lose it. Okay. You keep crying, okay. you stop fighting, we will kill you. So you, it's this, all this confusion because what they're trying to get you to is a place where you fear. Because when fear grips you, it shuts your system down. So, and that was the whole idea. And yes, that time came where I was shut down. Okay. And I, I was like, wait. And th that's when I thought about God. And I thought, wait, God, you're going to do something, right? You will come through, right? The car will overturn. We will be stopped by a policeman. You have to do something. Anything. So at this point, do you know that they are going to rape you? No. So you, what what is going through your mind? What what are you thinking they want? Are they trying to rob you? Yes. Okay. I knew this. They want to rob me. Okay. And I I had I had it all figured out in my head. Okay. I knew how I'm gonna take them home. I knew how I'm gonna convince them, or I will go ATM call someone, get the ATM. Like I wouldn't even alarm people at home. Mm. Just go. Because I need to have my wedding, mm. period. Like, mm. I just, I need, out my all, my all my thoughts were just, I need to get married. I need to go for my wedding. Mm. And our wedding was at 10 o'clock in the morning at All Saints Cathedral. Wow. That's an early wedding. Exactly. Because on a busy Saturday, they have, you know, 10, they 12, have and like 2 o'clock. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm. So, so when all this is happening, that's where my mind was. Until the one person who said, remove your jeans remove your trousers and that's when it just hit me oh my god it was you know a brick a ton of brick hitting you because i've read the stories or i saw it on tv something someone was raped but it's not my reality it's not even supposed to be something that you think maybe if it ever happens to me it's not that conversation you have and oh my goodness. And then I'm coming from that background where you don't think about such things lest it happens to you. Okay? Mm. So without knowing better, because today I can talk about what if something happens and then we pray. Mm. You know, you, you mm. finish and you mm. seal it in prayer and mm. moving on. Mm. But then you don't even talk about it. So, and, and in any case, it wasn't one of those things that you, you know, it happens to other people. Mm. Oh my God, that's really bad. Moving on. Mm. So when that came to me I, again I began now to fight mm. I am throwing I am kicking and I'm, and that's that was now the entry of being shown a knife oh so like utanya maza like you you're gonna keep quiet or we're gonna stab you and let me tell you we fought oh we fought for a while as I held on to the knife they would pull it out I mean we fought for a while and finally the, the guy who was with me at the back seat managed to pull out my jeans and that's the first man who raped me I cannot begin to explain I cannot there's no words to put to sexual assault mm -hmm. there's no words that would um, adequately explain what that is because it robs you of everything in you any any little dignity you had forget about much forget about the kind of background that i'm coming from it wipes you away because you're being taken by force you are this what you've kept this what you feel oh i just i'm gonna my husband and you've been waiting for this day but then it's snatched away from you not just snatched; it's taken away from you violently so when he's done the second guy comes the co-driver Oh, so now they switch places. They switch places. Okay. And there was no time. So at this time, you've stopped fighting. You've given up. I've, I'm not fighting. Okay. I am um, drenched. Number one, I'm drenched in blood. Because and they have I'm, been beating you. Yes, they've been beating so me. So have they stabbed you at this point? No, okay. no. So I'm crying. Okay. 
I have sobbed, I'm, I'm done. And then there was a point I felt there was too much blood uh, smelling in the car. So I knew I'm not going to make it. Like I just, I just oh. knew. I, everything in me, in preaching I would call it virtue. Mm -hmm. But in that case, I don't know what it was. But all my strength just left me. I just felt dirty, um, shameful, a scorn of the earth. Like, mm -hmm. mm, Terry this has happened to you so the second man i was there you know i was just whatever then the third guy came mm -hmm. that's the driver and that's the point where i thought the car so are they still driving yes when the second guy was raping me the car was still so has has oh, well you wouldn't remember mm -hmm. whether the sun has come up oh no 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 now i don't know you now it's now, now, now you're yes and i'm really trying to step out of that situation uh in order for me to survive and i it's it's always best for a survivor we pick something to work with mm. just to get out of that situation so what for someone happening? it can be children for someone it can be what for me it was god um you 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 need to come now you need to come now and i i just kept thinking about god you need to come now you need my mind was just it was just humming that it was just hitting that it was just because i believed the more i confessed the more just something so miraculous was happen. going to happen right so when the third guy came the car stopped i think briefly and this guy just came really his should i say his torso whatever he, he was this close you, you see the others would be down there mm. But he was this close. Mm. And then he began to unzip. Mm. And I thought to myself, mm -mm. okay. Mm -mm. Okay. Then he removed the pieces of clothes from my mouth. Let me tell you, woman of God, at that point, I said to myself, because I'm going to die, I will ensure this does not happen to any other woman. So I will do what I will do because I'm dying. I mean, the blood was too much. So I'm, I'm, I'm dying anyway. So when he put his manhood in my mouth, I just took a bite. I just pulled in my teeth not to let go. What made me let go was something I felt so sharp in my tummy. At that time, I did not know that I was stabbed. But I just felt an excruciating pain. That I just, that's how I let go. And from there, I was thrown out of this moving vehicle. I just remember hitting the tarmac, rolling a bit, and I passed out. That's, that, I mean, just like that. What? Right. You know, I know this story. You'd think I'd have gotten used to it. Yeah. Now. <laughs> but oh, this God. That was hard. Mm -hmm. wrenching right but we know it doesn't end there no it doesn't it, it, doesn't. Do it doesn't end there yes. but we are going to end it there for today okay all right because there was something else that happened on that day mm -hmm. and we're gonna pick up right from where what happened mm -hmm. after you were thrown out of the car mm-hmm and you will let us know in our next episode all right i think i need to, first i need to <laughs> i need my emotions to calm <laughs> down <laughs> and so my dear youtube family thank you for staying in touch thank you for staying um tuned in please subscribe share and like we are sharing this story because we know that there are so many people who are hurting out there mm -hmm. terry has been so brave and so bold as to share the details of her own ordeal with the hope that somebody will have some healing somebody will find some hope in their own situation mm -hmm. and that to remember 
that God never leaves us. He doesn't forsake us. Even though there are times, it looks like that's exactly what he has done. Mm -hmm. Because Terry still got raped, even though she was calling to God, even though she had kept herself pure, even though she had done everything she knew how mm -hmm. to stay right. But we will come back next time uh, in part two of this uh, journey of conversations with uh, Terry and we will find out from Terry what happened after that. So see you then. Bye-bye.